Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. First, I wanted to share some exciting news. My wife and I are moving to Miami. This means I'm getting more space to create more content and more space for me to work on my coin sorting robot designs. However, right now, all of my gear is packed up in boxes, including my 3D printer and all of my electronic equipment. So this video is going to be a little bit different than the one I promised in my last video. Now, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that my channel branding has changed, and in this video, I'm going to quickly go over how I created my new branding using mostly open source software. Eventually, the new branding will make its way over to the website and perhaps even onto some merch. <laughs> the coinbot.com is still under construction, but don't worry, I'm working hard to get it up and running as soon as possible. Now let's get back to the logo. You may have noticed my previous logo looked like a 3D rendering, and that's because I wanted to learn more about Blender at the time. I have some 3D modeling and animation experience from college, but that was about 20 years ago, and mostly with 3D Studio Max and Maya. When I tried using the earliest version of Blender around then, I found it to be really clunky. But the new versions are absolutely amazing. In just a few minutes, I was able to follow some tutorials on YouTube and animate a character that the Blender team had put together fully rigged. So I thought it would be easy to find a cute robot model online, import it into Blender, and render my logo. But as you might have guessed, it wasn't quite that simple. The model I found was rigged for 3D Studio Max, and unfortunately the bones and kinematics didn't translate over to Blender. So I ended up importing the OBJ version into Blender, but the rigging just didn't come with it. So then I started researching tutorials on how to rig a kinematic character in Blender. I noticed that most of the characters had organic bodies, were in their standard T-pose, had two arms, two legs, a head, and five fingers. Now these single mesh organic shapes are meant to be bent and squished when they're animated. But the robot model I was now working with had over 2,000 individual parts, all of them supposedly made of metal, and none of them are supposed to bend, twist, or squish. So the tutorials I found for rigging organic characters really weren't appropriate for the little robot character that I had in mind. And that led me down a real rabbit hole that took me a little over a month to wrap my head around and get working the way I wanted. Blender comes with some automatic rigging features that attempt to associate the nearest bone to the mesh that directly surrounds it. But since the robot was made up of individual meshes, it had a really hard time figuring out which mesh to associate with which bone. What I ended up doing was importing a skeleton with the correct number of bones, then manually aligning every joint and bone to the underlying mesh objects, and then painstakingly selecting and attaching each part to the correct bone. The other thing that made this more difficult was the fact that each of the over 2,000 parts of the model that I imported kept the names of the original primitive shape that was the original starting point for creating it. So each part was called something like Sphere 05 or Cylinder 652 or Box 325, and none of the object names had anything to do with their final shape or where they ended up on the finished model. So to make my life just a little bit easier, I went through and renamed every individual part so that similar parts from similar locations on the finished model were grouped in the object selector when sorted alphabetically. Using names like left thigh or right forearm made selecting those individual parts, if not easy, then at least a little bit easier. And finally, through a rather painful process of trial and error, rigging and testing, I eventually got the right system down. Basically, I had to associate each of the thousands of individual parts with each of the hundreds of individual bones, and after all of that, I was finally able to attach the armature to the skeleton and animate it. And after all that was finally finished, I was more than ready to render the thing and get it posted to the YouTube channel just so I had something up there. I threw in some text in GIMP and called it a day, but ultimately I wasn't happy with the finished result, and it looked a bit sloppy to me and I really wanted to change it to something better as soon as I got another spare block of time to fix it. 
Well, it turns out that the move to Miami is actually helping me to find some extra time away from projects I would otherwise be working on. And with the proliferation of AI image generators such as Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, the process of creating a new logo could not be simpler. I simply went into Midjourney and just began typing prompts about designing a logo for a YouTube channel about a coin sorting robot. <laughs> but none of the creations that popped out of my first several attempts were quite what I was looking for. They were either too dark, they weren't cute enough, or they just kind of looked sinister in some way. I was really looking for something that was a little more fun, and I ended up burning through all of my free credits. So when Midjourney version 5 came out, I thought it would sign up for a paid account and give it another go. The new subscriber powers allowed me to try many more times, and eventually I refined the prompts to a fine degree and eventually ended up with something that I'm totally happy with. Are you ready for the big reveal? Here's what I ended up with. And I really love it. I love the color scheme, and I think that will translate well to my other branded products, including the website. It's fun and vibrant, and he's really cute to boot. That prompted me to want to bring the branding over to a website, and so I started playing around with the finished logo design in GIMP. I ended up removing the white background so that I could move the little mascot around, and placed it in a blank banner graphic. Then I started playing around with the text. Now on a white background, I think these two blue colors really pop. But when I started to really lay out the design of my final website, I saw that I needed to add some color to the top banner. So I decided to go with this light blue for the overall theme, and that meant that this gold color here needed to be used for the text. And this is the final result. I am so happy with it, and you can let me know down in the comments if you like it too. So over the next few weeks and months, you'll see me building out the website, adding features and content there, and hopefully creating a nice space for all of us to share ideas. But for now, that's my two cents. If you're a fan of robots, tech, or just cool logos, be sure to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for even more awesome content. You might also want to check out this video that shows the challenges of opening my first 3D printer and getting it working. Thanks for watching everyone.